Hello friends of the Keywords, Jereng speaking. Today with a video about how to compile Keywords 0.7 syscode on Windows systems. In case you're on Linux, I covered that in a video already, so make sure to check out the description. Also for future videos about macOS, for example. Alright, so let's get started with Windows. If you don't know what compiling is, compiling is transforming human readable source code, in the case of Keywords C and C++ source code, into machine language and then machine executable format. You need this step if you want to get into development, create your own modifications. You hack around in the source code, make some changes in the text format, then you compile it and then you get your executable, your Windows executable for example, that you can launch and play. The step might also be useful if you find other modifications by other people that have no binary release and are open source. Okay, so let's get started. We are going to need three tools. There is Visual Studio and there is uh, Git and there is Python that we are going to install. There are two main compilers that are working on Windows for compiling C and C++ projects. There's Visual Studio and there's MinGW. In this video, I'm going to show you the Visual Studio way. Both work fine, but I'm going to cover only Visual Studio. Visual Studio is a big IDE by Microsoft. It's going to take up to six or eight gigabytes on your hard drive, so make sure you have some free space there. And it also requires a reboot during the installation process, so be prepared for that. Okay. So let's get started. Head over to your favorite search engine and type in Visual Studio Community because Community is the free edition. And then click on visualstudio.microsoft.com slash vs slash community. There's a big blue button that says Visual Studio herunterladen, in my case because I'm German. In your case it might say download. Click it and then wait for the installer to download. This is only a small installer program so that the download shouldn't take too long. But be prepared, the download of the whole um, IDE will take some time. Save the file and then go to Downloads and open the installer. Allow it to install and launch. Close your browser and then click Continue. All right. This will open up the installation menu where we can choose the modules we want to install. As you can see, here is also Python. We are going to install that individually, so make sure that's unchecked. Uh, we only need desktop development with C++. Don't confuse this with mobile development with C++ or game development or Linux development. Just click on desktop development C++. As you can see, it's already 6.5 gigabytes. Click install, and this will install the Visual Studio IDE. This can take some time, and after that it will reboot, and then Visual Studio is installed. So the next dependency we need is Python. Python is used in the TWAS compiling process to generate some source code. So go to python.org slash downloads and there's a big yellow button saying download Python 3.8.0. In your case it might be a higher version. Just make sure it's Python 3 and not Python 2 because Python 2 is still widely spread and it's going to be outdated in 2020. So scroll down to files. In my case I'm on a 64-bit machine which is very likely nowadays and then pick the x86 uh, 64 executable installer. If you're on 32-bit pick this one without the 64, save the file and let it download. And then we're going to open it. Um, make sure to add it to the path. This will unlock the feature to um, call it from command line and it will be more reachable if I can explain it like that. Uh, then click install now, allow it to install and then close. Let's make sure Python is correctly installed. Click the Windows key, insert cmd for command line and then type Python to open a Python shell. If it looks similar to this, your version might be different, all went fine. Just make sure you have these arrows here and you have a Python shell up and running. Type in exit with uh, parentheses to close it again. <clears throat> if that didn't work, your Python is not correctly installed, it might not be in the path, so make sure you go through the installation process once again. So there's one last dependency we need, it's called git. Git is a version control system and it's used to manage your source code. If you get into development, you will use it a lot. We are going to use it to download the source code. So let's get started. Type in git download and go to git-scm.com slash downloads. Click on Windows 
and it will install or download the installer. Then we are going to open it, allow it to install, click next, next, and I'm going to override it because I had it installed already. All these defaults are pretty fine. If you want an additional desktop icon, click here. Um, make sure you have a git bash and a git GUI in the explorer. We are going to use that. Click next, this is also fine. Uh, choose a text editor you're comfortable with here. Uh, I don't recommend using Wim if you are a beginner or don't know how Wim works. So um, choose your favorite editor here. <coughs> I'm going to stick with Wim. Uh, also, this default is usually fine. Um, also, open XSL is great. Unix style Linux and Minty T. Um, yeah, so also this is fine. All the and we don't want the experimental one. Um, all the defaults are pretty much fine. Um, if you know it better, then do it differently. Um, but for a beginner, the defaults are usually pretty fine, except when it's uh, pretty beginner unfriendly. Then let it install and finish. Okay. So now that we have all the dependencies installed, we can download the source code. The source code is located at github.com slash tworlds slash tworlds. So search for github tworlds and go to github.com slash tworlds slash tworlds. There's a cloner download button. You can download it as a zip archive, but you're going to miss out the submodules. So we are going to copy that URL or the URL tab uh, on the top here, and then we can close it. I like to put my source code on the desktop in a folder called git. So I'm going to navigate there. You can put your source code wherever you want. Go to the directory where you want to put your source code or where you have your source code already. Then right click there and click git bash. That's from the git tool we installed. There we type git clone to download the uh, repository with the flag dash dash recursive to download all the submodules included in this repository. And then we are going to right click, paste and uh, towards uh, repository URL. This is going to download all the source code with the submodules. So in case something goes wrong or you're missing the maps and it fails on languages, you probably didn't uh, provide the recursive flag or download it as a zip file. Make sure, important step. LS to see what's in here. That's a, you can also see it in the file browser. Now we have the tools directory here. Here's the source folder with all the code and all the other crap. So next, we can compile it. Make sure you're in the correct directory. If you followed step by step, you should be at the desktop in the tworlds directory already and all should look pretty similar to this. If you have your own source code, make sure you navigate to the very exact same position, to the root of the repository, where your SSD folder is located and your CMake list. Then click on an empty space to right click and open in Visual Studio. This will launch the tool we downloaded in the beginning. It's a huge IDE, it's 8 gigabyte huge, and it's, it's doing a lot of stuff, so give it some time to boot. In the background, it will connect with CMake. CMake is a build tool that will manage our build process. And Visual Studio and CMake cooperate to uh, make a great user experience for the developer. And they do magic stuff in the background already. Okay, on the top bar here, we can select our release type. Click on this arrow down here and click Manage Configuration. There's already the option X64 Debug. You want to click on the green plus and add a X64 release version here. Click Select and then it will um, modify the CMake settings.json. You can see there's a star here and this means it, it's edited. It's just a file that is located somewhere. And it will rerun CMake, then save this file and close it. And CMake gets rerun all the time because why not? Okay, so now we can choose between release and debug. Um, the difference is that debug is used for for debugging your application. If you're doing the development and you have some some bugs, um, oh my god, uh, you want to choose the debug version. If you want to share your application with friends or if you want to run it as fast as possible, select release because this will optimize your code. Then click uh, start element, uh, click down the arrow on the right here and pick the application you want to compile. Let's start with the client, click on tworlds.exe and this will um, select the tworlds application now. 
uh, if we click the whole button, not the arrow, or the green uh, play button, it will compile the TWATS client. Down here you can see the process, on the left side you can see at what step it is, and this will eat up all your resources of your device, so depending on the speed of your hardware, it will compile faster or slower. Alright, now the client is compiled and it will launch directly afterwards. Um, so far so good. We can close out here. And if you want to compile the server, just click uh, on this drop down here again and select TWATS underscore server. Same here, click on the play button and it will compile and then directly launch it. If you want to know where your binaries are located, go to your uh, source or to your repository again where the source code is located. Visual Studio created a folder called out. Navigate to out to build and there you have your folder for debug and release. We only compiled in release mode so go into release and here you have your um, your binaries, your exe files for Windows. Alright, that's it.